Nice. Nice shot. Look at that. It stayed together. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you guys here today because we are talking about ceramics and armor, right? Now, for a long time, I've stayed away from ceramic additives in my own armor, you know, and I did this because of a number of reasons. Uh, first off, how easy it is to break under blunt force trauma. And I don't want my armor to be compromised because I dropped it onto concrete or I happened to crawl across some sharp rocks and created some micro fractures in it. Right? I mean, even high-end ceramic armors have this problem. So much so that the manufacturers recommend having them x-rayed at least once a year to check for these hairline fractures and chips. The U.S. military cycles out their ceramic armor every six to eight months to do extensive testing because of this fact. Now, you might be asking at this point, well, tech, why even bother with ceramics in the first place? Well, because when they sing, they sing. And if we want to stop the fastest, meanest possible rounds out there, you know, the 308 and the 30 out 6, we have to look down every avenue that's given to us. So let's start this off by looking at really a plate that inspired this whole test, which was Turtle's Plate. All right, so first I want to talk about the plate itself and what it's comprised of two pieces of porcelain ceramic and a half inch sheet of polycarbonate. These porcelain ceramics were only a quarter inch so the whole thing compressed down was about an inch. There was duct tape in between each of these porcelain tiles and they were duct taped together. This was recommended by uh, one of you guys actually, a subscriber during my very first live stream, Mr. Turtle as I affectionately call him and he wanted to know would it be able to stop the uh, 223 right and how many shots it would be able to stop so these are the tests and this is what kind of inspired me to do all these other tests was this one all right so uh let's get out to the range and i'll show you what it looked like nice let's investigate it real quick i'll let you know right now mr turtle it actually pulled off from the polycarbonate and it didn't go through. It did not go through. That's awesome. Nice. Alright, so this is the plate taken apart. I love this polycarbonate, man. Half inch polycarbonate, right? I know you guys probably would have rather us slow down and not shoot that quickly and gone up and examined after each shot, but the truth is we had already done a long two days of shooting and it was really hot, so we were just trying to get it done and over with. However, counting up, so there was 10 shots from a 223 Full Metal Jackets, and I'm only counting about five exit holes here. Right? And look at some of these that almost made it through. Look at that. You can see all the lead in there. Right? But there's about, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, possibly six exit wounds. Right? And honestly, out of just cheap, just two, like less than a dollar porcelain ceramic tiles, right? And a half inch piece of polycarbonate and just duct tape. Having five shots from a 223, four to five, stopping for certain, right? Because I know it wasn't more than that, right? And some of this was still fairly solid. And this is what kind of inspired this whole project. So look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, there you have it, my man, Turtle. 
that was a pretty awesome plate. And it was probably the simplest plate I've ever made that was capable of actually stopping rifle rounds, right? And at worst, it stopped three. And at best, it stopped five. You know, I, I reviewed exactly where the shots were placed versus where it really blew out. And some of them didn't even really make it here. You can see how that ceramic armor just, or that ceramic tile just chews up the rifle rounds, right? And, you know, three to five shots is pretty impressive. But it got me thinking, instead of using duct tape, is there other materials we should try? And is there a way that we could maybe protect it, right? Because in the end, I don't want my ceramics to fall apart before a bullet hits them. If someone ran up and hit me with some brass knuckles or whatever the situation, you know, I don't want my armor easily damaged. So I started experimenting with elastomers, urethane resins and, and the like, and started coating them with different ones. And this is by no means finished, this little experiment that I'm doing. I just wanted to show you guys what I've managed to accomplish so far, because I have in fact managed to stop some bullets and managed to keep the plates together a little bit better. So uh, let's get started on that. Alright, so I've got this little porcelain tile cutter set up here. So that way I can make these little 4x4 plates that will be covered in the various resins that I wanted to test out. So this will allow me to get the most out of each little sheet because these are 8x8, so chopping them down to 4x4 gives me, you know, the most bang for my buck. And really I don't need huge plates when I'm doing these initial tests. So, I love these little tile cutters. If you do it right, you should be able to just score it and then do these breaks. Just like that. Right? Pretty clean. A little, a little off on that one, but not bad. So, yeah. I'll show you guys a close-up of that. Alright, so you can see I have the eight plates laid out. I'm doing two of each. They're on top of the silicone film release that used in vacuum bagging. So that way, hopefully, the resins won't stick to this other plastic, but either way, we can cut it off. So first up is this stuff right here. This, it says three times the flexibility for joint fillers. So I'm excited to try that out. But after that, we have the Loctite polyurethane sealant for concrete. Everybody's favorite is flex glue. Alright. Gonna try that out. And then last but not least, the seal best super cheap elast elast uh, polymer elastomer. Yeah. So those will be the first ones I'm going to test. I'm also going to test eventually this Lexel that I got actually for Bulletproof Glass and it works really well at maintaining optical clarity. But I want to try that out and I also have some other pourable resins. So the idea here is... So out of, the th out of the four different resins that I used, the Vulcan stuff was probably one of the thicker ones. That one and the Flex Glue. But it still spread on really nice. Like, similar to a cake batter. And this ended up being one of my favorite ones to use. This Loctite, however, was very thin, and it was self-leveling, though, so it made a nice smooth surface by the end of it. But in the end, you know, I didn't really care about how easy it was to apply, just whether or not it would, you know, function for the purpose I wanted it to. Now moving on to the uh, Flex Glue, this was by far the thickest, hardest one to apply. It just... I had to end up uh, ripping open the side of the container by the end of it just so I could get it out and smoothing it on was incredibly difficult. This stuff was very, very thick. So, but it turns out, you know, this one ended up being one of the better ones. So, and finally, this stuff that's pretty much just a crack filler for asphalt. I don't even think it's honestly elastomer. I just wanted to try it based off of some other stuff I've tested before. And this was very, very thin and sticky. Alright, so I've given them a few days to cure up. I had to cut them off that backing, at least some of them. So there's some that's still stuck onto it, but it's not going to matter too much. 
Anyways, so what we're going to do is one of each of these is going to go out to the range and the other ones we're going to do some drop tests on them. All right? What I mean by that is I have this tube right here that's a little over six feet tall on this. I can also move it up if I need it. That's why it's just zip tied on, right? With about a 12 inch gap underneath and what's sitting here is a light close-up camera and some clay so I can measure the impacts and see how well they're distributing energy. What I'm going to be dropping is this almost two pound slug. It's like 1.8 pounds and this mean guy. So we'll compare it against ceramic and each of these to see what kind of readings. We'll do multiple drops on each one until we get a failure. I just want to see how well this stuff is at keeping the ceramic together. That's the main idea here before we do the ballistic test. And I really like this weight drop idea, right? Because then I can, I can test a lot of different materials underneath here to see if you know I'm heading in the right direction. Pretty much, it hopefully should expedite my abilities at producing better quality armor is the main idea with it. So let's set up and uh, do some drop tests. All right, ceramic on clay, loading it up. Nothing else added to it, let's see. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. And you can see the impact that it had, right? And you can see how the fractures actually split it up. Now compare that, you know, the size and the distributing of the energy, the doming of the clay to this side where I just dropped. That's just dropping it straight down into it. And you can see the depth. The problem with this clay is it's not ballistic clay, but the uh, depth is better, so it's not as deep and the size is better. So clearly adding uh, just that ceramic, you can see how it's distributing the energy, preventing it from going straight through like that side, right? Nice deep hole. So, all right, well, we'll turn it like so and test it right here. And then I'll probably have to resurface it here soon. All right, so before we go any further, I guess, I want to show you guys this. So this is a quarter inch of that viscoelastic gel I was talking about during my live stream. They make a foam. Uh, the company's called Shock Tech, right? And they make this gel and foam. It's a viscoelastic polymer, and it is by far the best. Now, you remember what we just saw, right, dropping the weight on it from a little over six feet high. Now, we just put a quarter inch of this gel on it, right? It in. Look at that. Didn't break it. All right, next up is the black seal best. It's really ductile. Let's take a look. All right, so make sure that's all together. And three, two, one. Hmm. Interesting. I'll show you guys what this looks like. Look at that. One large crack. An even smaller imprint compared to nothing. Right? Just the ceramic. Look at that impact. Right? Larger area. Domed in. This concave. And look at this. It is still falling apart. Didn't hold it together perfectly. Look at that back, right? Hmm, that's real interesting. It's behaving more like I wanted it to, where the pieces are kind of sticking together. Wonder if you used a thicker amount on this. Did you get more shots out of it? I mean, it did distribute more to it, more energy, right? But it only took one shot. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. We'll keep these together, though. See if we can't get another drop out of it. All right, now on to the white flex glue one, right? 
Same thing as before. Make sure these are lined up. And three, two, one. And three, two, one. So there's the impact point. Right? Virtually no back face deformation. Just squeezing it now to. Yeah. So there is some cracking in there. You can hear it. Right? It didn't make that cracking noise before. So it definitely cracked it, but it did not like fall apart. So this could take more shots. So we'll save it back. Alright, so now on to this Vulcan 166 polyurethane. I'm kind of excited about this one. I personally think that this one might perform the best, so let's find out. Three, two, one. And all the other ones, it hit and bounced off, right, so far. This one, it did not. It just fell and stuck and fell against that. There's the impact. You can see the dust mark, right? i to flip it over. A little bit of energy. Let's hear it. Oh, it did crack. It did, in fact, crack. You can hear it in there right interesting so it did crack but yet again it kept it together now up to this Loctite uh, concrete sealant right this is another one I think it's going to do really well but only one way to find out where's this at? all right keep those together three two one oh, one Oh, that was real. So there's the impact, right? I could actually see, and you can kind of see it here, the line from it fracturing in there. See them? Yeah, you can. Look at those fracture points. It held it together. Very, very little back face deformation. I should have flipped it around. I didn't do that, so this is partially from the last drop, too. So what I did was I just continued to drop them till failure. When, what I mean by that is I was dropping them until I saw significant cracks forming through the bottom and damaging the clay underneath. This one took 10 shots from it, including the first one. Um, the next one, however, took 12, the Vulcan stuff. But the Loctite, surprisingly, only took 6 shots before it started to clip through and eat into the clay. And that was the metric I was going with to see how much blunt force trauma it could take before the uh, resin itself started to give up on the um, holding the ceramics together, pretty much. All right, so out of all the drop ones, right, this one only took one. This one took a significant beating before finally giving up. This one, surprisingly, didn't take as many. I mean, it is still holding together. Guess I dropped more on these. Maybe I can... But I don't know. This one took a crazy beating. This is by far the winner, in my opinion. Look at that. It's just starting to, after all them drops. I mean, man. This one's still holding together the best. I mean, this one did take a significant beating before it finally gave. But this one started to clip out there, and that's where I was stopping. It was when I started seeing stuff come out the back. This one never really did. It's a little bit on that edge. Right? You compare it to this one, or just the ceramic, you know. This stuff just doesn't seem to perform as well. So, but yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I guess it didn't come out the back, but another drop, and it would have probably blown those apart that one at least so let's uh get out to the range and see how they perform there all right so the uh, drop test revealed some interesting results but you know this is an armor channel so of course we have to go out to the range and actually test it with the real thing so place your bets which one do you think is going to actually win 
it was shot during a thunderstorm, so the audio kind of cuts out here and there, and I'm having a little bit of trouble editing it, but hopefully you guys still enjoy. All right? All right, so I'm out at a buddy's range. I got it backed with clay, and I've got Kevlar slips. Pretty much the stuff that I use for uh, stab-resistant tests is uh, now being used as a backer to see if we can't catch some of the bullets. So we're gonna start off with just a normal ceramic tile with nothing added to it. And then we'll step into all the others to see what kind of shots. We're gonna be shooting it with just 838 Special Full Metal Jackets, right? Just to see how much damage these things can take. So let's get started. Nice, perfect shot, buddy. And that is the inherent problem of ceramic armor, right? It stopped the bullet, didn't go all the way through. You can see right there the impact on the Kevlar, right? But the ceramic is destroyed. So that's the inherent problem of utilizing ceramics. Very little back face deformation, a little bit, but not much. Let's try some of these other ones. Nice shot. Editing better or easier, but all right. So it, it did in fact there it is. Look at that. So the clay is still shattered like the other one, but you can actually get the impact reading. That's kind of interesting. I assume this one would behave a lot like the other one. But yeah, there it is. There's the impact. Now where's the bullet? Hmm. Don't see the, the bullet. We, we found the bullet for the last one, but I don't see the Oh well, I will step it up to another one. Nice shot, look at that. It stayed together. <laughs> yeah, this right here is exactly what I was hoping for. Look at that. Oops, back it up, Jay. <laughs> hot, ain't it? <laughs> no, I just didn't want to be. Oh, you're good. It is hot though, look at that. Let's take a look at the back. Right there, that doming, that bulge. That's where the bullet is. But the ceramic is still holding together. So theoretically, let's put another one in. See how many shots it could theoretically take. So. And maybe if you can, you're actually far more accurate with this dang thing than I am. So if you can put one right next to it. So you hit right there. Right there is the bullet. Right there. So the, the ceramic is cracking fragmenting. The second shot was unable to pierce the backing, the Kevlar backing. You can see that the ceramic is still kind of holding together. And there it is though. Full metal jacket. The ceramic is still holding together, at least some regard. There you go. We're starting to get rained out here, but you can see now that the ceramic has been thoroughly damaged. It was caught right in behind it. But there it is, it's finally starting to break apart. But three shots is better than one. Let's try the other two. Hopefully. There we go. I would show you guys a close up of the clay and everything, but because it's raining right now, I don't want to get the camera completely wet, but right there was the second shot. This was found right in the Kevlar behind it. So this clay is pretty much worthless at this point. It is just too beaten up in there. It's, uh, you know, it's still holding together somewhat, but it really wasn't as effective as the last urethane coating that we used. So let's try the last one. All right, so here is the new one. This one actually performed closer to that middle one where the bullet didn't make it all the way through where we could find it in the backer. It actually stopped in the ceramic itself. And this was actually the one that I was hoping most to work. And it feels like it's still holding enough together, we can maybe put another shot into it. But yeah, check that out. There it is. Right there. We are, in fact, stopping, you know, handgun rounds with cheap porcelain ceramics. And urethane coating, so that's pretty impressive. Alright, so we're getting rained out here, but 
we stopped the second one already and I said just go ahead and finish it off and only one of the five managed to make it all the way into the back face of this one because it was hit you know obviously in the same spot over and over but that's pretty good pretty good all right, so I just wanted to briefly show you guys the plates now that they've been shot, right? And honestly, this one, that flex glue stuff, was the best. And what I mean by that is when I was studying the shots and everything that I put down range, you can tell how damaged the ceramic is just by trying to flex it, right? And how well it's still holding up in there. This one, you know, which I was really hoping would do the best, honestly didn't perform that amazing. I mean, it did take the second shot, and none, nothing was able to make it through this 10-layer uh, Kevlar backing, which had previously been stabbed. This is some of the material from the stab video, right? The closest one was right there, was when we were shooting this one all to crap, right? From right there, where there wasn't hardly any resistance, because he shot twice here and then once right there. And that's, that's the one that got the closest, right? But for the most part, you know, some of these are stab marks, but there's nothing else in there, man. Nothing else in there, just that bullet. Isn't that crazy? But this one, you know, there's still got a bullet in it, right? And there's still, like, compare that, right, to this. Now you can't flex it that much, a little bit. There's a cut right there, but there's still a lot of good material right there. This one got shot twice, this one got shot three times, and it still held together better. And one of them didn't go through at all. So, that's the obvious winner out of these five different plates. They're just basic ceramic, but I found the bullet from the ceramic where it was just the porcelain tile. Check that out, it ripped that jacket right off of it. It's pretty neat. There's all the ones I've collected so far. Right? So, yeah, clearly coating it in a urethane is going to help it. All right, well, there you have it. I mean, clearly coating them in urethane resins can re reduce the blunt force trauma from the drop test that we've done, and it actually holds, them, holds the ceramic together pretty well that you could get multiple shots out of it. You know, and this is really interesting. This is by no means finished, right? There's a lot of urethane resins out there, a lot of elastomers that should be tried. And, you know, thinking back to Turtle's plate with the two ceramics and just duct tape, what happens if you coat it with a really thick, rubbery thing? You could probably keep that profile right around an inch and keep it still fairly lightweight. How well would that have worked, right? No telling until we try it, right? So I encourage you guys to try this at home, you know. I, the backer I used was nothing more than Kevlar and a little bit of ballistic nylon. You know, that it most of the bullets didn't even start to dent it until the ceramic was really damaged. And that final one that really caked in there, but, you know. You know, fact is, we stopped some full metal jackets with just cheap ceramics and cheap urethane resins. That's awesome. And what happens when we try out some some urethane resins that have truly remarkable uh, material properties. I'm real excited to try those out. So, anyways, if you like this sort of content, please like, share, subscribe, all the other things that YouTubers say to get you to engage with our content, right? I want to mention that I am made up three plates that I sent to Toflater Mouse. And I'm so excited in the next couple of weeks he should be testing those out at his channel. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out, man. His, his stuff is awesome. And uh, I'm working on Bulletproof Glass, more HDPE, a bunch of stuff in the future, guys. So stay tuned. We're going to make some really cool stuff here. And uh, special thanks to Turtle for suggesting that plate and for Larry for standing out in that freaking rainstorm, the thunderstorm, uh, and shooting with me and helping me with the tarp and everything, man. You, you are a champion. I really appreciate it, Larry. All right, guys. As always, see you in the next one. Take care.